Hello and welcome to the episode 358 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we have a return to an old venue, the start of two variety shows and an aborted attempt to take part to a sit-in. On the 24th of December 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Chaz Newby on bass, had a performance at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Wallasey. The Grosvenor had started its rock dances nights again under a new management after the old management had to stop rock and roll events after a number of complaints from the neighbors in July. The Beatles shared the stage with Derry and the Seniors, both bands receiving £10.50p, about £240 in 2020 money. Two years down the line, in 1962, we find the Beatles in their definitive quartet lineup, with Ringo Starr on drums and Paul McCartney on bass. On this date, they performed for the seventh of 13 nights at the Star Club for their last ever residency in Hamburg, West Germany. This, instead, won't be my last ever plea for you to support my efforts to create more and better music related content, but we're getting close. If you are listening to this episode when the podcast has run its course, don't think that your help won't make any difference. It would still count to see that people might want to get more Beatles inside. Anyhow, at the end of the episode, you might want to visit www.simonmas.com support to learn what you can actually do and to see how you can acquire the deluxe version of this podcast with exclusive NFTs that you will be able to resell, perhaps even making some money on the side. Thank you for taking some time to lend a hand, and let's move on with the second part of the episode. Two variety shows started on this date. In 1963, it was the turn of the Beatles' Christmas show, starting its 16-night run at the Astoria Cinema in London. The show, created and presented by Beatles manager Brian Epstein, was a two-hour affair involving a seven-act bill topped by the Beatles and presenting to the audience a kind of musical variety show, with music, comic sketches, performed by the Beatles themselves between each support act, and a general atmosphere of chaotic merriment. The show was a financial success, with all the 30 houses full and 100,000 tickets sold by the 16th of November, after less than a month from the start of the sale. The Beatles' repertoire for the final 25 minutes closing each house was Roll Over Beethoven, All My Loving, This Boy, I Wanna Be Your Man, She Loves You, Till There Was You, I Want To Hold Your Hand, Money, That's What I Want, and Twist and Shout. After the only show of the evening, the only other time it happened during the run was the 31st of December, the Beatles and all the other NEMS acts flew back to Liverpool to spend Christmas with their families, in a private chartered plane booked by Brian Epstein. The 24th of December 1964, instead, saw the beginning of the another Beatles Christmas show production. It was the second music, pantomime and comedy variety show put together by Brian Epstein for the Christmas season replicating the formula from the 1963 The Beatles' Christmas show. The show took place at the Odeon Cinema in Hammersmith, London. Every show saw The Beatles appearing on the stage for two comedy sketches, one with the dreamers Freddie Garrity, another with DJ Jimmy Seville, and performing the 11 songs that closed the house. The repertoire consisted of Twist and Shout, I'm a Loser, Babies in Black, Everybody's trying to be my baby, can't buy me love, honey don't, I feel fine, she's a woman, a hard day's night, rock and roll music, and long tall Sally. On this first night and on the 29th of December, there was just one house, but generally speaking, each of the 20 evenings of the run consisted of two shows. During the first week of the run, the Beatles were approached backstage by radio host Chris Denning, 
who interviewed them for a forthcoming Radio Luxembourg show aptly called The Beatles. The show aired for 42 weeks, mostly consisted of interview material and record requests by the listeners. During this first interview, the lads also dedicated songs to family and friends. John chose to send his love to Pete Shutton and Nigel Wally, two former members of the Quarrymen. Paul greeted Ivan Vaughan, another ex-Quarryman, the boys at the Liverpool Institute, his former school, and the girls of the Blackburn House School across the road. George chose his friends Arthur Kelly and Tony Workman. Ringo sent his heart out to Roy Trafford, Ald Caldwell, aka Rory Storm, the leader of his previous band, and his parents Ernie and Vi. Let's close the episode with another 1969 adventure for John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Having returned from their trip to Canada on this day, the couple intended to participate to a fast and sit in for peace and against world poverty tonight at the Rochester Cathedral. On their arrival on the premises with actor Dick Gregory, though, it seemed obvious that their presence at the sit-in would have caused some commotion and so, they preferred to return to their limousine and attend a midnight mass at the cathedral before returning home. This concludes our efforts today. Tomorrow, there will be a quick festive episode with a couple of curiosities. Don't miss the Christmas fun! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.